Hello everybody, welcome back to American Textbook Reading. My name is Brian Stewart, and in this lesson we're looking at Social Studies Book 4, Lesson 13, Maps and Locations. So, where do you live? Don't be worried, I'm not, I'm not going to drop by. I'm, that's the subject of today's lesson. In this lesson, you will discover how to use a map and how addresses work. So you can think about where do you live and can you find your house on a map? Well, let's take a look at the lesson. As usual, we start with the vocabulary and the first word in our vocabulary list, or actually two words, is absolute location. What does that mean? Absolute location. Well, you may know what location means. Location is, uh, you know, where something is. When we talk about location, we're talking about, you know, is, is it uh, in this state? Is it in this country? Uh, is it on this street? Where something is. Absolute means very precise, very, very detailed. So, absolute location means the exact, exact is this, it means very precise or very uh, accurate, exact location of a place. So, some people might talk about absolute location. However, most people just say location. Absolute location is more of a technical term used for very precise language, okay? Most people just say location. What is the location of your school? Or where is your school located? You could also use it that way. Okay, let's move on. Relative location. See, now we saw absolute location. Now we have relative location, and we can tell from the different words that these two ideas are different. Absolute location is the exact location of an object or something. Relative location is a way of describing where something is by comparing it to other things. For example, uh, you can see in this map here, right? You have my location looks like an apartment building. Maybe you uh, uh, are in an office building. This could be an office building too. Let's say it's an office building. And where is your office building? Well, it's uh, close to your home. It's about a block away from your home. So that's a relative location when you compare where something is compared to something else. Absolute location is just giving the information to say exactly where it is located. And we'll talk about that, of course, in this lesson. Okay, so that's the difference between absolute location, the exact location, and relative location, just where is it compared to other things. Okay. Next, we have column. Column. Now, sometimes you'll look at a table or maybe a map, and you'll see that there are, are rows going across, right? There are numbers that, that might go across. We call those rows. There might be numbers going down. Those are called columns. So, in a table, there are rows and columns. So, a column is a line of words or numbers written under each other that goes down a page. You read the column down from the top to the next on underneath, underneath, underneath. You don't go like this, right? You read straight down. And on a row, of course, you read straight across just like as if you're reading text or reading uh, some English. English reads from left to right. Not all languages do, of course. Okay, that's a column. A row, we just talked about row. Row, of course, are the numbers of the words that are going across in a table or in some kind of grid. A grid is a system of lines going down, up and down, and across. That's a grid. And if you read uh, the numbers or words on a grid that are going across, that is a row. So you might have several rows in your table. A row is a set of straight lines on a map that makes squares. You could also say that. On a map, you can divide your map with lines that are going up and down and also across. So you can see in the column on that map grid, you can go down the column or you can go across. And this is a good way to find something in a map, an absolute location, for example, because if you number the rows or the columns across the top, A, B, C, D, E, and you number the rows going down, one, two, three, four, you can say, 
H4 and you go across H that's your that's your column go down the column until you see the row four and boom it's in that square if you ever play the game battleship that's exactly what's going on right you call out a number a5 miss or hit right and then you hit the battleship or not so that's a fun game to play but that's exactly what we're talking about here with columns and rows okay map grid map grid i just explained that right you take a map and you make a set of straight lines on a map that make squares so you have lines that go up and down usually north to south because it's a map and then you have lines that go from east uh, west to east or east to west it doesn't matter south to north but anyway you have lines that are uh perpendicular to each other that means a 90 degree angle and they make squares on your map so you have a map and you make these small squares on your map so that you can easily find out where something is like i said you say uh my house is located in h4 yeah my house is in that square okay great now you can make the square small or you can make the squares big right so depending on how exact or detailed you want uh, the map coordinates to be. Coordinates are a set of numbers that tell you where something is on a map. Okay, and the GPS system that you might use in your phone uses the same system. Okay. Next we have separate. Separate means apart from each other. They're not together, they are separate. Okay, so it just means apart from each other. And we have a, this is a very interesting picture, isn't it? Those are weird looking office buildings. It looks like they're gonna fall. Oh no, no, of course I'm sure they're engineered so that they do not fall, but they're pretty cool looking, right? This is kind of cool architecture, right? Okay, so of course uh, uh, the, the office buildings were probably built by the same uh, builder, maybe the same architect made them, of course, because it would look silly if there was just one of them. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> so you have two of them, but they're not together physically. They are separate. Of course, they are together aesthetically in, in terms of their design. They're together, but they are, they're not touching each other. They are separate. Envelope. Some people say envelope, envelope doesn't matter it does you know nobody's gonna care which way you say it envelope or envelope <clears throat> most people I think say envelope envelope of course is a paper container in which people put a letter or a card of course if somebody has a birthday you get them a birthday card right you sign the inside of the birthday card then you close the card and you put it inside an envelope and then you give it to the person. You put the person's name on it, right? Well, a long time ago, before you were born, people used to send paper to each other and they called these things letters, <laughs> okay? They would write on a piece of paper their message, they would fold it up, put it in an envelope, and they would go to the post office and mail it. It takes maybe a day, sometimes several days, depending on how far away you're sending your letter. The other person would receive it and read your letter. Yeah, that was before email, of course. You have probably have no idea. So anyway, an envelope, when you did that, you had to put the address, right, on the envelope. Of course, nowadays we still use that, but most, most of the time it's just boxes and company. Like you order something on the internet and the company will send it to you, but they put their address, not in an envelope, it's in a box because you ordered some goods. <clears throat> but they still put your address on it. So just basically an envelope is a paper container in which people put a letter or card. The idea of course is that we're writing the address here. <clears throat> of course, nowadays you're more familiar with boxes. Same idea, you still have to write somebody's address on this, uh, in this space so that the letter or the box gets to your house. Okay, those are our words for today. Okay, let's talk about the first main idea in this lesson. And by the way, I should point something out right away so you don't get confused. In your book, you might see that at the top, in the book it says rows, and over here it says columns in your book. Sorry about that. That may have been a misprint, but it should be columns. These A, B, C, and D are columns. One, two, three, four are rows. So you can just make that change in your book, okay? Uh, and, uh, you know, sometimes mistakes are made. Printing mistakes are, 
are kind of common, unfortunately. Okay, so anyway, uh, this is using a map grid, okay? And we talked about this already in the vocabulary, right? I said, you know, you have the, your columns across the top, A, B, C, D. Usually they use numbers at the top and they use letters, or uh, sorry, let me switch that around. They use letters across the top, A, B, C, D, and they use numbers for the rows going down. That's very typical, for example, you're maybe too young to use Microsoft Excel, but that's what they do for that program. And it's a very common uh, technique or a very common method. So, as we can see, using a map grid is really convenient because we can find these places uh, that are over here on the map key. Now, oh, what? by the way, we have a key. Key? What do you mean key? Is it a key like you open a door? No, on a, a key on a map just explains what symbols mean. So if you have a symbol, you see this little picture, this is a symbol. You think, what is that symbol? Well, in the key, it explains that this symbol, what does it mean? It means Nick's home. And over here, you see an envelope, right? And you say, oh, what is that symbol? What is that symbol for? And it says post office. That is what the key does. It shows you the symbol that appears on the map and then explains what that symbol is. And that is a map key. Sometimes people call it a legend, legend. But most of the time, people call it a key, a map key. So we have school, we have hospital, and we have library, and all these, that's what these symbols mean. Now, if you want to know, like in your town, where are these places? Well, for example, where is Nick's home, right? He invited you over for his birthday party. You prepared a card in an envelope, right? So don't go to the envelope symbol, <laughs> go to Nick's home. Where is Nick's home? On the map grid, we can find it very easily, right? Where is it? It's in B1, right? Because the intersection of one and B, ta-da, there's Nick's house. So you can see a map grid is really convenient. It's very easy to find things using a map grid. Let's do one more. Where is the hospital? Well, we need to find this symbol right here because in the key, it tells us this symbol is the hospital. So here's the hospital here, but on the map grid, where is it? Well, we can see it's in column C, and it's in row four. So the hospital is in C4. That's where the hospital is. So using a grid is very easy when you're finding things on a map. Great. Okay, so, and by the way, we talked about absolute location and relative location. So if we say absolute location, if we use the map grid, that tells us exactly, precisely where Nick's house is. So that is absolute location when we say Nick's house is in B1, right? So that's absolute location. Same thing for the hospital. Absolute, the absolute location of the hospital is C2. Four. That is the absolute location. But what about relative location? Remember, relative location, you're comparing the location of one thing to the location of something else. So if, again, if we look at Nick's house as an example and we want to compare it with something else, well, we see the post office, right? The post office is next to Nick's house. So we can use that as the relative location. We can say Nick's house is near the post office, or you can also say next to because it's, it's, uh, it's in the next block over. It's in the next building over. It's next to. It's next to the post office, or it's near. If it's near, it doesn't have to be right next to it. It could be a couple buildings away, but it's close, right? So next to means the two buildings are right next to each other, but near, it could be next to, or it could be one or two buildings away from it, okay? But it's just near. So Nick's house is near the post office. That is relative location, okay? So we can use maps to find both the absolute and relative locations 
of places. And of course, this is very helpful when you're out in the city and you're going to someplace new. You've never been there before. So you need to know either the relative location or the absolute location of something. Now, of course, absolute location, this is one way to find absolute location. But another way to find absolute location is not using a map grid. It's using something else. And that something else is the address, right? Now, the address also tells you the absolute location. It doesn't use a map grid. It uses a system of numbers and street names and city or village names, city, a village town or city names. Sometimes you can also use the country name. If you're sending something to another country, you have to put the country on it as well. So address, your address is an absolute location because it tells everybody exactly, precisely where something is located. Now we talked about this before. Uh, when we talked about the letter, and I, I, I told you, you guys don't use letters anymore, but you can still see it, of course, on packages that are sent to your home. You have to write the address on an envelope when you send a letter. Now, different countries have different postal systems. So, the way that you write your address might be different from some the way somebody else uses an address. In America, when you send something to somebody, uh, you write their address. Usually, of course, you put their name. So let's use my name, for example. You would write, you're sending something to me, you would write Brian Stewart at the top. At the top, for example, here, and you can see the name right here. I, I'm rewriting it because it's a little difficult to see it. You shouldn't write an address like this. It's a little difficult to see. But you see, what is his address? Is that, then there's a number. 200, I have no idea. <laughs> okay, let's just say, let's just say it's 200 and I'm, I'm going to guess, I think it's Schwab, uh, S, well, let's, I'll just write it, it doesn't matter, Schwab, and then I don't know what that is, let's just say it's Avenue. Now, in America, there's many names for streets. Sometimes people will put ST, that means street, or they'll put AVE, I think that's what this is, and AVE stands for Avenue. So there's many words for streets. I think we covered this in a previous lesson. So the street, Avenue, Boulevard. Um, there's a lot of different names for streets. But anyway, that's the name of the street. And this is the number. So the post uh, office person, when they're going down the street, there's numbers on each building. And they say, you know, if they're going down Schwab Avenue, they start, you know, maybe with uh, 100 and they kind of keep going until they hit to 200 and then they find your house. Of course, where is it? Now, what is this here? Uh, this is a, the name of a yeah, uh, I think it's Cam oh, it's Cambridge. Okay, uh, but again, don't write like that because that's horrible. The post, the postal, the postal post service worker will have a very difficult time reading your address. So be very clear and write carefully. Cambridge, how do they spell that? Cambridge, Cambridge. What is that? Massachusetts, maybe? Yeah, okay. Massachusetts, there is a Cambridge in Massachusetts, and M-A-S-S -S is the abbreviation for the state. Again, in America, you don't have to write the whole name, Massachusetts, whoa, that's a really long, difficult name. Mississippi, oh my gosh. So you don't have to write the whole name of the state, people abbreviate them, right? Sometimes it's just two letters, like Nevada is N-V, right? California, C-A, period, right? In this case, Massachusetts, M-A-S-S, -S, period. Whew. You don't have to write out the whole name of the state. And then what are the, what's this over here? This is what we call the zip code. And again, the handwriting is horrible. That looks like a B, but it, B doesn't exist in a zip code. It should be all letters. So I think it's one, three, two, four, nine. Looks like maybe two, four, nine. Again, it's hard. If, if I was a postal service worker and I saw this, I would send it back to the person who was trying to deliver it because this is horrible. That's, the handwriting is terrible. Again, if you're going to write an address on something, make sure you write clearly. <laughs> okay. Make sure that the person, uh, the post office people, the people who work in the post office can read the address 
on the box that you're sending or the package that you're sending. Okay, this is, this is terrible. Okay, so anyway, you write it out. So you have your name, you have the street address, and then you have the name of the city, the state, and then the zip code. The zip code is very important because the post office system in America has a zip code. That number tells them the location. So even if they can't read, you know, your writing in some parts, they can, they can figure out the town and the state by the zip code easily. Now it might be a little bit more difficult, the street address, that's a little bit more difficult because the zip code is for a large area. But anyway, zip code is very important and you should include that if you're sending something to an address in America. And of course, like I said before, many different countries have different systems. So make sure you know the system and it could be different for a different country. You know, maybe they put the, the ta sometimes I see, sometimes they put the city first, right? And then they put the street address or they don't have street names, okay? I've seen that also. It's just numbers and maybe a location. So it depends. Okay, but that ad that's an address and that address tells the absolute, the precise, exact location of the, the house, the apartment, the office building, whatever the place is that you're sending the package to. Okay, let's move on. Now it's time to do the reading. And as usual, I will read out loud. You guys can repeat after me out loud or in your head. Let's focus on the vocabulary that we learned and also pick up some new words maybe along the way. You guys ready? Let's begin. Everything has a location. We can use maps to find the location of something. There are two kinds of location, absolute location and relative location. To take an example, Nick lives in Westlake. The absolute location of Nick's house is 17 Crumble Street, Westlake. It is the address of Nick's house. The relative location of Nick's house is near the post office. It's easy to find Nick's house on a map. Using the columns and rows of a map grid, his house can be found on the map. Both of them show the location of Nick's house. The map shows both the absolute and relative locations. Sometimes Nick writes letters to his uncle. His uncle lives in a separate town from Nick's family. Nick has to write his absolute location on the envelope before he posts the letter. Just want to point out something, post the letter, you can also say mail the letter. I think post is more common in British English. Most Americans will just say mail. Uh, so post, and post isn't just for uh, the verb, it's also the noun. Uh, a lot of, Brit you know, if you're, in, if you're in England or Britain, people might say, did you receive anything in the post? That means, did you receive any letters or packages in the mail? An American would say, did you receive anything in the mail? Or what's in the mail today? A British person would say, what's in the post today? So a little bit difference between the two words, between British English and American English. Interesting. Anyway, so we can see that, you know, Nick writes letters. Wow, he's using old technology. Maybe, but you know, sometimes people like to write letters because it's more personal, right? It's, it's a little bit, it shows more effort if you write a letter than just writing an email. Of course, you know, 99.9% .9 of people just write emails these days. But, you know, sometimes you can send a letter. It's, it's nicer, right? It's more personal, shows that you're making more effort. It's up to you. Okay. Let's see how this reading passage was organized. In this case, we have 
compare and contrast. And of course, we're talking about two different things in this unit, right? Absolute location and relative location. So let's compare the two. Here we have absolute location on the left and we have relative location on the right. By the way, on the left, on the right, relative location because we're comparing, okay? Okay, so absolute location. Here we have Nick's house is 17 Crumble Street. What was the town in which he lived according to the reading? Did you catch it? It was West Lake. West Lake. And now if you want to be very specific, right, you could also put the state and then of course you'd put the zip code after that. So you'd put the state and the zip code and that is the complete address. And if, and if you're mailing to another country, you'd put the country name underneath as well. But anyway, 17 Crumble Street, Westlake. Now, relative location, what is Nick's house near? And don't say near to, there's no reason to say near to, just say near. Uh, don't say it's near to blah, blah, blah. No, it's just near. Okay, that's, that's enough. Okay, so Nick's house is near the what? Do you remember from the reading? It's near the post office, right? They said it is near the post office. Two words, post office. So Nick's house can be found on the map using columns and rows of a what? Remember, we, we talked about this quite a bit, actually. You know, you have your columns you know, going up and down. You have your rows going across, and we call that a grid. What kind of grid? It's a map grid. So here we have two words also, map grid. So, oh, yeah, I spelled it right. Okay, good. Phew. Nick's house can be found on the map using columns and rows of a map grid. And of course, when you make squares on a map, that's called a grid. Now, both of them, both the absolute location and the relative location show the what of Nick's house. Of course, that's what we're talking about in this unit. We're talking about the location of things. So show the location, location, location of Nick's house. Okay, and that's how we know where things are. And of course, it's especially important when you want to send a letter or most often nowadays packages to a certain a home, an apartment, an office, whatever, a company, uh, you want to send a package to them, you need to know the absolute location and you write the absolute location. Of course, we don't use map grids. Don't send a box to H6, that's the map grid, right? Because, you know, different people will have different maps, you know, and the, the, the grids will be different, right? But the addresses are always the same. The address is the best way to send a package. Don't send a package saying H6 because the post office is going to go, H6 on what map, <laughs> right? So use the address, okay? But uh, you know, if, if you and your friend or somebody else has the same map with the same map grid, then you can use the map grid. But usually we don't do that. But like I said before, GPS does use a map grid that's used by everybody in the world. And that's how GPS works, Global Positioning Satellites. That system works, our Global Positioning System. But that's very precise. The military uses that and other people as well uh, who want to be very precise in their location. That's using a grid system. But of course, most people will just use addresses to either send a package or if you're going to a new place and you want to visit a museum, uh, you want to find a movie theater, you want to find somebody's house or somebody's office building, you use an address. Okay, well that's it for this lesson. Now we know how to get around uh, in the world using maps, grids, and especially addresses. Thanks for studying with me. Hope you enjoyed this lesson and learned a lot. We'll see you in the next one. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.